this is a sort of loading that you may want to apply within a backus model on the front of this you have a sign function which is varying in a sinusoidal function on the base here you've got a parabolic function on the top here you've got a trinomial function with a linear varying load and right in the center here you've got an internal pressure load where you're applying a tangentially varying pressure load defined by this equation I'm going to show you how you can do this in Abacus. So let's sit back and relax as we get started with this video. So as we get started with this video, the video is a viewer requested video, which was requested by Sultan Shire. And basically he says, yeah, excuse me, Dr. Michael, I have a question about the analytical field functions in Abacus. Can I construct parameters of X1 and X2 as an expression in an analytical field for a 2D dimensional geometry? And how can I do it? Thanks beforehand. And so this got me thinking, I started thinking, okay, what do we need to do? I provided some response for him in the in this video so that he can but then the essence is here to show you how you can actually do this within abacus we're going to be using this kind of steel plate so 25 by 25 millimeter steel plate with a hole in the middle and the material property will be an elastoplastic material property with parameters given in this way now the load cases that we're going to be considering here are like i alluded previously is the fact that there will be a sine curve displacement so this is for example where you've got like a, a seismic variant loading on a structure so then a sign of displacement would be what you want. Then there's also a parabolic loading. So maybe for example, you're looking at a displacement load bit that varies according to a parabolic loading. Then this could also be something we need to do. The third case is where you're combining two loading types, a trinomial varying displacement with a linear varying displacement or combined together. And finally, the tangential varying pressure load. So in this case, it's not a typical pressure load where you've got the radially expanding pressure load, but in this case, it's varying tangentially. And so that's what we are going to be looking at in this video. Now, look at the first instance. So basically, this is the system we are looking at. It looks like this. And we expect that there will be a sinusoidally varying pressure load that looks like this. So it's you know, it's, it's kind of a roller support, a fixed support at the back with a hole in the middle. And this is the expression of the loading that we want to use. So the X displacement, because we are displacing this in the X direction, will be expressed according to a, a, a unique equation, which will be delta being the maximum side of displacement that you're using, delta zero, times sine 2 pi y is what we, we have. And so that's what we're going to be using in this. So basically the variation of the function would look like this. So if you look at it, plot it, it's changing from zero to one. However, we're going to make delta to be two so that we just have a significant deformation within this model. And that's in this first instance. So how do we do this? So let's go into Abacus and begin to show how you can do this. Okay, so here we are in Abacus. And the first thing we need to see here is that, okay, this is a part has been already created and the section assignment material is there. So basically a material is going to be made of a steel material as specified with an elastic and a plastic component. Nothing else included there. And the meshing, so we'll just use a simple mesh where everything is uniformly meshed with a proximal global size of one. And then within the assembly module, we created an instance, a single instance first and foremost. So what we want to do is to apply certain load on the system. So basically, at the back i'm going to say okay x back fixed so let's start with that and that will just fix securely what's going on at the back and we're going to fix it in the two direction so that's the first thing and then the second thing now is to apply our sine curve but then first thing we go while still in the load so you go to tools analytical field and manager so this will bring you the option of you to create this expression that we're looking for so if I do create, okay, so I'm going to call this my sine curve. And here we are going to specify what sine curve we want to use. And the expression we are, we are exploring, it will be 2 times pi times y. So this is the expression of the sine function without the delta included. We can then create a load that goes together with that. So within the boundary condition of load, so I'm going to say x front load. So it's going to be associated with a step function that we are using. So we're going to apply that on the front of the system. And 
now okay what will happen in the one direction we have two because this is a, the size of loading that we want and then we can attach a sine curve to the problem so basically instantly here you see your sine curve and we can then submit this job to run and visualize the result so this is the kind of result that you get when you apply the sine curve loading so right at the front here you see the sine curve variation of the loading on the system and that's basically the kind of result you get by applying a sine curve on the system. So the second equation will be a equation where we're looking at a parabolic function that varies according to this expression and the, we're going to apply it on a domain that looks like this. So if you look at the graphical representation of this parabolic function, basically saying that at the maximum um, position of at the ends of the plate, you're going to apply a loading of 160 units, which is way too much. So what we need to then do is to find a way to bring it down to a reasonable amount so that it will be within the two millimeter displacement that we're applying on the model. So, and what I'm going to do is that multiplying this whole system by, you know, 0 0.01, will bring it down to the right level that we can use. So let's show how you can do this in Abacus. So within Abacus, all we need to do is, again, we go to the loading module and under tools analytical function so i'm going to call this a parabola okay and with a the parabola then what we basically need to do is x squared which will be x times x minus 25 times x plus 156 so this expression that we want to work with so again we create the loading for that so this will be on the y base so this will be the y base load a step function so I'll select the y base here and attach it with this parabolic function and it will be on the y direction and it's minus 0 0.01 will be the delta value attached to the system so that way you could have a parabolic function that varies like this so I can then suppress the x front load so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this loading so that the, there will be freedom for it to move in the y-axis so basically we need this displacement in the y-axis so let's look at the results so when we apply this in the in parabolic function you could see the system is showing the right kind of behavior here so parabolic variation of loading on the y-axis as expected okay so for the next case where we have is a loading case where there's a linear load with a trinomial displacement attached to it so how do we do that so this is the function that we're trying to model so there is a linear displacement which is 2.5 times y so this is something varying according to the y-axis and then the x value the changing in the x value would be um, x cubed so this is the function and so how do we again in order to make it reasonable so at the maximum position this value becomes 15,000 so we're going to multiply with 6 times 10 to the power minus 5 to bring it down so that it will be within a sensible number that we can generate that 2 millimeter displacement that we want so let's go into Abacus and show this so here we are in Abacus so we're going to first again go back to the load module and within the load module if we go to tools analytical fields managers so we are going to then create this particular case which I'm going to call linear trinomial and within this environment, then we can now specify 2.2.5 times y plus the power of x raised to power 3. So this is a simple function. So this part being the trinomial and this part being the linear function. And then that's it. So we've got it written down here. Then So go to the boundary condition and basically, so this will be y top load. And it's going to be a displacement based on a step file and we select the top end and click done and right here with the y-axis so this will be 6 e to power minus 5 as we stated previously this is the delta value to bring it down within a value that is acceptable and then instead of a uniform deform we are going to use the distribution function which is defined by the linear trinomial and then so you can see now it shows you this non-linear varying case as we expected from the beginning then we can then submit the job so let's look at the result we get so this is a simulation result that we generate from this so basically you can see what's happening here so at the top end is loaded in a trinomial function and you can see the deformation following what we expected it to be based on the loading that we specified and so then of course you can also look at the distribution of stress within the system so this is what happens when you have a linear 
function with a trinomial function and you get this kind of profile as shown in this case now if this is the kind of video that you like please do subscribe to this channel so that when contents like this are made you'll be the first to see it and if there are other kind of equations that you want me to demonstrate how you can actually plot them using this analytical function in Abacus, please let me know and I will try and make a video about that. The next loading is what I've described here as a tangentially varying pressure load. So normally pressure load will apply and then expands radially on a system. But this instance, we want that pressure load to change with direction as you move around in the system. And this is a schematic presentation of what is really going on here. So you can start with a zero pressure load at this point and then as you keep going around, make 180 degrees by the 180 degree position that pressure load has become maximum and then as you switch around to 181 and then go back to 360 that pressure load again reduces until you come to, the, to zero so this is an unusual formulation of pressure but let's say this is what you want to do and i want to demonstrate how you can actually do this using the same function that we've been talking about so the function is p is equal to 2 theta pi and for this case, there's something unique. So this is basically a schematic graphical representation of what is changing here. What is unique here is that because we are working with a theta and a radial coordinate system, so that means we have to have a cylindrical coordinate system rather than the Cartesian XY coordinate system for this. So we're going to show how you can do this in Abacus. So inside Abacus, to be able to do this, so our assembly function, we go to the assembly function, and there is this variable here, create a D2 max. So at D2 max, I'm going to call it a cylindrical codes, a cylindrical coordinate system. Now it's asking me for certain things. What is the point of the origin? So I'm going to make my origin in the center. What is the point corresponding to a wire, a radial axis? So it will be any point along this line. So I could say there. And then what will be the tangential, the theta plane? So this is the plane that is 90 degrees with the radial line. So I'll select that. So now, so you can see here, it's created this cylindrical coordinate system for me. And then I'm going to now specify my loading based on that. So how do we do that? So if we go back again to the load module and under tools, analytical manager. So let's create what I would call tangential pressure. Okay. Now, what we really need is to switch the local coordinate system to the global coordinate system. So there's a Deton list here and our syndical code is what we want. So now we have seen that we can change the coordinate, local coordinate system to a cylindrical coordinate system. Now all we now need to do is to say two times theta, which is its value here, and, and, and then we are done. So that gives us a pressure load. Now we are going to apply that pressure. So by going to the load module here, so I'm going to call it inside pressure. Okay. So, and where are we going to apply it on the internal surface of the system? So what is the loading that we want? So this will be one e to power five. So that's one bar that we're applying on this domain. And we're going to use the tangential pressure to apply that so you could see what we, we talked about before so you start from zero it goes all the way to 180 around here and then switches around and go back until you get to zero so this is a tangential varying pressure load for some kind of application this may be what you want to do so now with that the next thing we we have to then do is to apply the load and run the setup so let's look at the results so with the results it's, it shows a kind of a variation and, and admittedly what's going on here is that this inside part is being pushed in because that's where most of the pressure load is in and then the front end is not really that pressure loaded and so we get that kind of behavior on here from there now the final thing is to bring all this load together and then conf confirm what the result will look at so and, and i've already run simulation so if you look at the results so when all the loads are all brought together so it gives you some really interesting so you could see the sinusoidal function right at the top you see also the parabolic function the pressure load here and then the on the top you get this trinomial function if you want to learn about the unit system that drives the whole argument that we're making here then look at this video if you just want to learn other abacus tips and tricks like what i've just talked about here then look at this playlist thank you for interesting this video and see you in the next bye bye